All right, we're back for part two. <laughs> part two. Wolf Mountain Vineyard here. And uh, that was some great time with... Uh, with Brandon, with, yeah. With Brandon to give us some wine education and a little bit of perspective on what his thoughts are of MLS and Atlanta United. Yeah, we're going to keep this brief. We're still coming to you um, from the beautiful tap room in uh, at Wolf, uh, Wolf Mountain Vineyards. But I think we'd be remiss if we didn't talk a little bit about MLS uh, Cup playoffs and the MLS Cup final, which is tomorrow. Tomorrow. And who is in that final, Dave? <laughs> the two teams that you picked, Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> So while you've been bragging and you are rightfully uh, winning on the overall points as we uh, enter into the MLS Cup final tomorrow between LAFC and Columbus Crew, um, I believe, Carmen, you had Seattle and Columbus Crew. Dave, you had Houston and Columbus I Crew. Had, I had all four of the final four, correct, yeah, you had which all was the, yeah. great. But, uh, yes, I had Houston yeah. upsetting L.A., and uh, that didn't yeah. come to fruition. And, and so, yeah, I'm going to be the upset, obviously, if LAFC is able to go into Columbus, Ohio, and get a win. But I like that. As, as always, like being the underdog, um, I think I'm going to win. I think I'm going to be so bragging let's go on right the next to, podcast. You're picking L.A. Fun. still. Do you yeah. have a score? Yeah. Two to one. Two to one. Um, you know, one thing I'll say before, before I, I'm going to pick Columbus, but uh, at home I think they're terrific. One thing I noticed is that, you know, if you look in, in, the, in the previous round, right, in the semifinals, um, two teams went on the road and won. Um, but it should be noted that three out of the four semifinals were um, were one nothing, and the other one was 2 nothing. right? Okay. So... One thing that we talked about a lot is our woeful defensive record at, at Atlanta United. And it was pretty clear when you got later and the teams were much more evenly matched and they were really good. MLS is a really scoring league overall, yeah. but you needed to be able to defend to make it through to the playoffs. All of the teams that are still alive got shutouts in that round. So we were unable to get a, I mean, we weren't coming close to a shutout. Yeah. So this is, you know, going back to next year, you know, and maybe we'll talk very briefly about, you know, Atlanta United's prospects for next year. But, um, you know, if we give up 53 goals, which we've been giving up, there's no chance. Yeah. yeah. Because that's what the playoffs showed is that as it got a little bit later, you have to be able to get a shutout. Yeah. So how do you feel about that? Uh, I still think LAFC has enough horsepower to get some goals in this game. Um, yeah. I don't know. That's just my gut. I mean, last year's final was epic. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, you know, I mean. That was the Gareth Bale Gareth finale. Bale, yeah. yeah. I mean, was it 3-2, I think? I think so, yeah. Uh, I mean, it was absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal game. I don't really, I hope so. I yeah. would love to see a 3-2. Yeah, 3-2 um, would be better than my 2-1 And I don't think it's going to be a shutout. But I think LAFC can find a way to get two goals in this game. Yeah, and I'm pretty much going to go the opposite. I'm going to go 2-1 to one Columbus. Okay. So I also think Flip there will flop. be goals, okay. but I think that uh, it'll be Columbus in okay. the end. Do you watch any of the, the build-up and any of the, uh, the, the playoffs after Atlanta United got knocked out? Yeah, so, you know, I guess I want to talk about a little bit, right? So the crew absolutely dominated Orlando on the road, as sort of uh, we predicted. Um, you know, Orlando... Um, uh, basically, uh, Orlando is really well coached. I mean, one thing I'll say, you know, when we talk a lot about coaching, uh, Oscar Perea, who is the Orlando coach, he had them as a sort of a high press, which is, of course, what Pineda wants to do, but I don't think we really yeah. do. Um, when they have the high press, their backs are really up, and, and that allows them to high press. The moment the press gets broken down, that moment, their entire back line backs off and they go into a lower block. Yeah. So he plays almost like an underdog all the time. So if you're an underdog, you have two possibilities. One, you try to press up high and steal something, grab a, you know, a, a, a crazy goal. Or you just play a low block and hope to get a counterattack. And he actually has, has opted to us to do a combination of sort of both. They try to press... But they don't ever play in the middle as a team that dominates the middle. They almost concede the entire midfield. The moment they lose the ball, they just drop and yeah. try to get back into a two, two banks of four, basically. So I watched a little bit of the playoffs here and there. One of the things that stood out, it brought up the VAR 
controversy in MLS again. Yeah. Was that Orlando and Philadelphia Union? In the, I can't remember. Or was it Cincinnati in Union? Cincinnati um, in the Union. It was Cincinnati. But I just want to say one more thing before we move on from the Orlando-Columbus game. So Aiden Morris, the young American yeah. guy. Jordan Morris's little brother, right? I don't think he is related to Jordan Morris. Is he not? have to double oh, check that. made that up. So anyway, I'm not sure about that. But anyway, Aiden Morris is not only terrific, but he almost single-handedly won that game, right? Not only was he dominant in the midfield, but um, on the goal in overtime, he literally stole the ball just outside the box, ran into the box, got to the end line, and crossed a, a low through ball across the six-yard box, which the keeper got a hand on and pushed it right to Christian Ramirez, and he finished. But... This is what we've been lacking. We have been lacking uh, a, a, a dominant midfield presence who can not only um, win the ball more and help to win the ball, but occasionally pop forward and give you something like that. Is Moyama not that guy? Well, I think Moyama could be that guy. But the thing that's so different is Aiden Morris is playing on a platform of Nogby where he's where he's covering in for that. Yeah. So when Aiden Morris does go forward like that, if he doesn't succeed, then we don't get blown. Yeah. Moyama well, we, could be that player as long as we had someone behind him. Yeah, well, we know we need a, a holding six, and we don't. We haven't had one since uh, and do you Nogby think, left us. So it seems to me like we're likely to recall Abara. So the first question is, do you think Abara will take that? I mean, he may not have a choice, but... Yeah. You know, is he going to fight to be like, no, I don't want to come back to you, you jerks? No, he's not going to fight. He's, he's going to come back, and yeah. do you think he is he's good enough to old. be that six behind? I think he's going to come back, and I think you're probably right that that's exactly what they're going to do. And I do not think he's good enough to get to the level where we need to be, no. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, he's much better. I mean, he's still got upside. That's one thing I'll give the So kid. one thing is he never played with a – so he had to play all the time with a Josetu. Yeah. And when – so it's not really clear to me. I don't think he's good enough to be a defensive midfielder on his own. He might be good enough yeah. with Muyamba actually playing yeah. some defense also. But it's this whole thing that they say they want continuity. All this might work out if we have some continuity, if we keep Miles Robinson, right? We got Lennon. We got Abram. Yeah. We still have Wiley. I don't know. Like they, so let's that's, talk briefly. Do we think that we're keeping uh, Almada, and do we think that we're keeping Robinson, elephant in the room? I think that Atlanta United thinks they're keeping both of those players. I think both of those players don't want to be at Atlanta United anymore. I don't think even the club thinks they're keeping Robinson. I know they said that the offer is still on the table, but they keep saying that, like, they keep talking about, well, just to almost to placate the fans and say, well, you, just so you know, there is still an offer on the table. That seems to see, me to say that, like, that will tell you, well, look, we tried our best, but we know he's gone. Yeah, but he's only gone if there's a team that wants him. That is absolutely true. So, but, well, you know, to be fair. You think that PSV is going to. Since he is a free agent. You know, so there's two totally different situations here, right? Almada's under contract, so we need a huge transfer fee to let him go, right? Robinson's a free agent. His contract his, ended. His destiny his so, is kind of up for him to go. So he doesn't court. actually have to. I mean, he may not get the contract he wants. He might have a larger contract offered to him for Atlanta United yeah. than, let's say, going to Europe. But he doesn't have to do anything. There's no transfer fee. Atlanta doesn't have to accept so, that. I don't know if you know this, but, like, what are the rules on the agents of – Robinson and Almada, one who's under contract, one who's a free agent. Yeah. Clearly, Robinson's, even right now after MLS season's over, his agents are allowed to go talk to PSV and try to come to terms on, like, once the once the winter window opens up for those leagues, we're, you know, make, it's an, a o very, make, very, make, yeah. make an offer and we'll accept it, like, at least, like, verbally come to that. But what's the difference between that and what's happening with Almada right now, who do is, is Almada and MLS... Are they allowed to go actively try to court AC Milan or uh, The answer is whomever. not really, but they do, right? So, you know, it's the tapping up thing. The whole tapping up is approaching a player who's under contract without permission from the club. So technically they're supposed to approach the club first, and then they get permission and they can talk to it. Now, yeah, well, there's nothing really that can stop an agent behind the scenes talking about it. So let's say Almada's agent can be out there talking to people, listening, and then he can say, let's say that you know Tottenham decides they really want him, and they're like, okay, we're going to put a 20 million offer. So he can then go to Atlanta United and be like, do you have? Can they have permission to talk to him? Yeah, but for Almada's agent to find out if Tottenham or 
Man City or whoever, right, is is actually interested. In, he's, he needs to be over in England, right? Yes. T- talking to people. Yes. Okay. And is that happening? Like, where is Almada's agent? That's a agent? good question. Like, this is, like, all the dorky stuff know. that people follow. But, um, like, if we any of these... We lost our... Uh, Carmen just had to step out for a minute. So we lost our ability who's following all the yeah. Instagrams and seeing. She might be able to tell us where the agent's at. Yeah. But I don't know. We need to put a, we need to put a beacon on him. But <laughs> I, now, I don't think... Um, the club has any interest in letting Robinson or Almada go. I think it's a mistake for Atlanta United to try to uh, hold Almada based on some artificial price they're looking for, given this kid's future potential in football. So I don't know. I just hope they, they balance things. It's not like they need the $3 million difference or whatever it's going to be. If somebody lowballs them, yeah. you got, they, you know, it's a better look for Atlanta United at the end of the day. If all of a sudden we look over and Almada is kicking ass in the EPL, Absolutely. like that's a, that's, the, that's worth a low ball. And um, have you followed Almada's comments? So, right. So he made comments onto some South American yeah, he's, uh, interview. He's live and, yeah, yeah. And, and he basically said, I want to leave now. Yeah. <laughs> it was what he said before he came to Atlanta. You know, he wanted to leave now for Europe, but, it was clear that he was definitive in his... Do you think he crossed a line there or no? No. I agree. Why? What line are you crossing by saying... <laughs> um, well, a lot of fans would be like, you're, you're under contract here. You should not express any interest in you know." It, he didn't express interest in a team or whatever. He said, I want to be playing for one of the top leagues in Europe. Those are my aspirations as a player who wants to be one of the best I can be. Okay. That's all he said right now. He clearly said it with some urgency and some tone. And I can only interpret this from Twitter and the way it was being framed. I don't speak Spanish um, in, in a way that I can at least interpret the, <laughs> it, the, the real nuances there. But you could tell that there was a real urgency with him not necessarily going to be too happy if he's Atlanta, in Atlanta United Jersey come February. And I, that's okay. a problem for the club and for the player right. and for the fans. I agree. You can't have a disgruntled player. No. So that's a nightmare. And I, you know, I think he's not going to be disgruntled. I think he's going to be professional and do the right thing. That's just what I've seen from Almada, but we're not going to see the best soccer. But him. if he leaves and Robinson leaves, I, you know, even I presume they would replace them with we good do. players. Like, yeah. We're in really yeah, big trouble. We have trouble. a bad goalkeeper. Yeah. There's no the, been no his, sign that we're going for a new goalkeeper yeah. either. Yeah, Guzan is going to be uh, I mean, hopefully they'll surprise us, and there will be. Yeah, well, he's right. going to be his, the best case scenario. Is he's as good as he was this year? That's best case scenario. Look at any stats of any goalkeeper. Was their last season their best season, Dave, or a, a incrementally better than the season before? Like on any sort of curve, has that no. ever happened? No. No. So Guzan's not getting better next year. No. And so the rumor is that Colorado's interested in Zach Steffen. Right, and then that obviously suggests maybe he would be trying to court him to come back. Do you think Atlanta United should use a designated player on, on Zach Steffen? I would love it if they did, especially if in the next week or two they decide on a fourth DP that opens up a little oxygen. Yeah. Absolutely. Just so you know out there, like, so our designated player situation is really, really good. So right now we have Gigi, we have Almada, and we have Saba. But Saba can be bought down very easily, so then we would only have two designated players. Yeah. So we would have two designated players to play with if they add the fourth, no matter what. And if Almada were to leave, we have three. So in my opinion, even though there's, ne- as far as I know, there's never been a designated player goalkeeper. I mean, you can, can out there, you can correct us if we're wrong. But um, and I think that's the idea is that you don't want to use a designated player because there's not so much value over the average goalkeeper. But when you have the worst goalkeeper in the league, and Brad Grison was really one of the worst, if you got maybe what would be one of the best, that to me is a huge value added, right? Yeah. So, okay. So let's talk about the, the VAR situation in the Cincinnati game. Yeah. <laughs> Right, it's so there's a cross and, and a free kick, and it's headed back into the middle, right? Um, and uh, you know, yeah, the guy, the guy who uh, headed it back across when the ball was coming over him, he was clearly offside. And I clearly, mean, clearly, <laughs> I mean, it, it was like, okay, well, he's offside by you know half a foot, right? Like by an attacking part of the the play, the player, right, and the the trailing foot of the defender, which was the last line was of the defender. It was. It was Quite evident, um, even uh, even on any angle that I looked at there. There's one angle. It's like, that's enough for me. Yeah. How is it that um, a league 
can't can't sort that out based and even on the even I think there the would have been a fair amount of change in this season if if it if uh, MLS had a line like there were a number of yeah, really gosh. egregious calls I don't think they need a line at all I stop this line business <laughs> what do you want then I just I want the algorithm yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, no, I, no we don't need to be spent a computer generated call. Computer says it's yeah, that's it's, what I mean. it's this or that. If you want to look at the line, you can do it afterwards on like ESPN oh, replay. I see whether you want to be able to show the line. I don't really care if they show a line. I want a computer calling it. Right, I'd right. love for that's them to show me the line too, but yeah, but, I don't really but, care about but, that. But here's the thing, Dave. You show the line enough <laughs> after the fact on e- like okay, yep. stop showing me. That. I believe it. The, the computer system works. Yep. What they need to get is a computer system that works. And a way to explain why it works over and over again to the time like you you make everybody so believe that it actually does work by showing them the evidence after the fact and why we can't get a bunch of georgia tech mit students to solve this everybody says we need expensive cameras to do this you need do you know how much a, a camera costs it's even like a basic like <laughs> crappy hd like broadcast camera. we don't need broadcast i don't want to see it yeah what okay. i want is give me 52 cheap 100 dollar hd GoPros that give me all the angles and the best, it, you don't even need that. I'm just using this as an example. You can do it for probably quarter million dollars a year across every stadium with light white, lightweight tech that gets it right with the algorithm. Qatar actually proved it worked with 12 cameras. Yes, there was, those are broadcast level cameras. They, they don't need to be to figure out where a right. line needs to be drawn. Absolutely. Qatar already clearly has the algorithm. So the program's actually already been written, I think. So whether somebody needs to rewrite that program or buy it from the Qataris, because <laughs> theirs seemed to work really well. That, okay. that, that first game of, of the World Cup, it was one of the weirdest offside calls ever. And you, they explained it, and I was like, oh, my God, he was offside. And they got it right. And you do enough of that. You do do that. You know, all you got to do is like a handful of times on big goals, and they go back and show it. Like, all right, here's the rule. This is what offside. It's a line. I know we hate it, but it is. And even even if you gave benefit of the doubt to the offense, that's another great cushion to say, hey, if there was any grayness in this in terms of it being right on the line, we're going to give advantage to the offense. Yep. That's a really clear answer to it. Be like, hey, yep. this was so close that we just said, hey, yeah, the right. offensive guy gets the advantage. It's simple to solve. that in the Premier League. If the lines uh, touch one another, that's yeah. considered the margin of error, and it goes to the offense. Yeah. W- what they need to do is make it faster. Yes, for sure. Just say, hey, the computer figured it out. It was on or offside. Let's move on. Okay. So just to circle back to the importance of a goalkeeper, and when LAFC went on the road in Seattle and beat Seattle, early on in that game, Jordan Morris has a walks in on in on goal and doesn't score. There was an absolutely terrific save. Um, they also had a couple of uh, close calls from long range that, that Seattle had a couple of great shots that were really, really well saved. I don't think Guzan makes those saves, right? And yeah. and they're only still in the final LA because of that. They they were really outplayed by Seattle. They yeah. deserved their goal. Buanga scored a terrific goal, but to me, the importance of a goalkeeper was shown yeah. in that game. He kept them in that game. And you know what that is a sign of sometimes, Dave? What? The MLS Cup champ. Because I'm winning. I'm coming for you. <laughs> no, no, no. Define no. the odds. So just so everybody kinda is like clear. Ar- kind of like Arsenal So if Columbus blue, wins Tyler. tomorrow, I win the pool. If uh, LA wins the tomorrow, then then yeah. uh, Mikey Dobbs wins the pool. He's behind, but he would overtake yeah. me by virtue of having picked LA from the beginning. I think that's a good way to, to wrap things up here. I want to is- say, I want to talk about one more incident. Okay. Uh, in the playoffs, Matt Miazga. Right? So Cincinnati center back, right, in the Red Bull game, right, the second of the two games, they didn't have to win that game, but they ended up winning on penalty kicks. He takes a penalty kick and converts, right, I think it was actually the game winner, um, and he makes a gesture to the crowd where he gives them this heart, right? Yeah. Now, he started as a Red Bull Academy player. I don't know whether the referees knew that or whatever. So. There's a lot of speculation that he was actually being genuine, that he yeah. scored on them or whatever. Anyway, he had been a total jerk the entire game, including in the second half. Yeah. And he'd already on a yellow card. And the ref took it as basically taunting the fans. Right. right? And he gives him a second yellow after the game is over. 
right? So because of that, he was now suspended. They gave him the second yellow after the game is over for the heart? Yes. No, well, why? Because they thought he was taunting the but fans yeah, and trying to rally. Don't you have to give that yellow during the moment? It was during that moment, and he considered it still to be in during the game because it was during that right. He literally took the penalty kick. He made the heart, and the referee went right up to him and said, Oh, so he did do it, but the game was over. The game was over. I got it, got it, got it. So he was suspended for the next game. And before we talk about that incident, apparently 90 minutes later or so, after everything's calmed down on whatever, Miazga actually went into the referee's locker room. Not according to the Players Association. The Players Association actually admits that he went into the locker room. Okay, I didn't see that. They said that that was false. He didn't actually go into the door. No, they actually, I think, admit that he went into it. But what they felt is that um, there's speculation that he apparently maybe he was carrying a pizza and that he was going to say sort of sorry. Yeah. It's not clear. Okay. Nobody knows what happens, but he goes into the locker room. Nobody knows what happens in the locker room. But then the rule is very, very clearly yeah, that no players are yeah, ever yeah. allowed in there. And he's suspended for the rest of the playoffs. So I want your thoughts on A, the yellow card that gets him suspended in the first place, and then the the, the five game suspension that he received after that. Two two mistakes by refereeing right there. This is simple. Uh, he did a heart to <laughs> another team. Like if if we are so soft right now that throwing a heart to another team is taunting, you know what I mean? If it's if it's something more egregious, come on. I, Whatever, something lewd. Even if it was taunting, it seems to me it's not enough to no, but so, the yes, send-off. but something lewd, right? Like yeah. you, you get a double oh, yeah. bullet, like fingers, yeah, yeah f- fingers sure. flying or a something really fungal, or whatever. Line, yeah. You know, it's like okay. So there's mistake number one by the refs. They've they've altered the future of the best talent meeting up in a in a final by making one of the best players in the league not available yep. that's making the game about them and not really about whether he- and Cincinnati fans are incensed because they lose to Columbus at home and gave up those three late goals yep. I mean that was an amazing game for you yep. for Atlanta United fans I don't know if you saw that but yep. in any case it cost them because yep. they collapsed in the back okay. so there's one mistake by pro refs second mistake is Unless something really did happen, he walked into that room, which he shouldn't have if he walked in there. But let's say he did walk in there with a pizza, which it sounds like it was more something on that side based on the way that the Players Association came out. The Players Association came out hard and fast with theirs. So that leads you to believe, like, okay, whatever Matt was doing was not actually him being more of a hothead. It was actually maybe something more... Ju- he is a hothead. He is, he is a hothead, <laughs> but it sounds like it was something... And he's sort of earned this over it, time. But fair okay, enough. I, I'm, I'm empathetic to that, but it sounds <laughs> like this is stuff all at this point behind closed doors. There's rules, there's whatever. If So if, if the referees did, in fact, feel threatened in any way, then they're justified, okay? Yeah. To do whatever. So if they if they were, then they should come out and say, "Here's what happened, and this is why this is why we did this with Matt, the three additional three game suspension because he came in the locker room, he didn't give us a pizza, he gave us a bad attitude, or maybe or, he gave us a pizza and we said you're not allowed to be here, and he was like, "I'm just giving you a pizza," and got all snippy and started yelling at. Or them. yeah, or, even or, if that's a, if you're in there yelling at, at yeah. any level, then psh, any yeah, level. Sure. Yeah. Or, yeah, but you would think, right, if you went in there and gave him Matt, you can't be in here. And he's like, oh, sorry, guy. Hey, sorry. Great yeah. job, ref. If that's and he all left, it was, then Then, no then just keep that in the house. Yes. You know what I mean? So Have some restraint. I, I feel because, beca- mm-hmm. yeah, show your grown up. And I feel because yeah. the refs haven't come out and said, no, he did. He was a little snippy. He was a jerk when he didn't belong in our locker room. If they can't clearly come out and say what was said or done, then they should have just kept it kept it behind shut doors and kept it professional so okay they so screwed up they screwed up double the sun is coming down yeah. on the tap room it's coming down yeah. on our podcast season i don't know we may or may not get to a podcast after the final yeah. uh, we've made our predictions we'll end with one fact so in the final mls top 11 two atlanta united players make it yeah right Gigi obviously and, Gigi almada. and almada the only mls team with two attacking yeah. players on the team, yeah, right, and you know, it's to disappointing. Me, yeah, it's, it's okay. not disappointing that they made it, but disappointing that we didn't advance further given the talent we had at that moment. I agree. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for listening. 
do make it up to Wolf Mountain Vineyards. This place it's is gorgeous. absolutely stellar. Um, and appreciate the Bogners having us here and hosting some amazing wine tasting. And uh, again, go to Avondale States or West End uh, Wild Heaven Brewery if you want to taste a little of the wine before you, you come up here. But you really shouldn't. You should just make dri- it drive up here. Up here. Yep. It's Alonaga. It's in the mountains. <laughs> it's beautiful. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening. Cheers. <laughs>